All right, well, hello, and my name's Colleen, and I'm really excited and I feel really motivated about being here today to talk to you all about motivation. So thank you all for coming. I'm just kidding. Hello. <laughs> like how awful would that be, right? If someone was really standing up here like, hello, I'm here to talk to you about motivation. So I am really actually excited to talk to you all about motivation because it is a topic that I care a lot about. Um, raise your hand if you've ever been at work and you have felt unmotivated. Right, <laughs> we all have from time to time, right? So what types of things make you feel unmotivated? I should have told you all up front, this is a very participatory class. So <laughs> what makes you feel unmotivated? What types of things make you feel unmotivated? A nice sunny day, okay. Definitely makes you feel unmotivated from sitting in the office all day, right? Okay, good. What else? No recognition. No recognition. Okay, good. What else? Overwhelming workload. Overwhelming workload. Raise your hand if you've ever felt overwhelmed at work, right? <laughs> all of us from time to time. What else? What about outside of work? What types of things might make you feel unmotivated? What were you going to say? Lack of sleep or like wanting to sleep instead, right? Okay, I'm with you on that one, I love sleep. What else? So we all from time to time have felt unmotivated. So when I was putting this together, I was thinking, what are some things that I think people would wanna hear about motivation? And what are things that I need to remind myself sometimes? I always write and do things that sometimes I need to hear myself as a reminder. So when I was putting this together, I thought of this topic, what to do when you don't feel like it at all. <laughs> now raise your hand if you've ever not felt like it, whatever it may be, right? So specifically, this one's gonna talk a little bit about how to find motivation at work, but I'm gonna give you some tips about how to motivate yourself to move forward in any area of your life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. See, check, we've already done something that makes me feel even more motivated to move forward, right? Um, my name is Colleen Elridge. I'm with the Office of Diversity, Equality, and Training in the Personnel Cabinet, and I am really excited to be here to talk a little bit about motivation. So what I want you to do now is I want you to partner up or get into groups of three and introduce yourself and tell each other one thing that you struggle with when it comes to motivation. It can be work related and can, it can be personal related, but one thing that you struggle with when it comes to motivation. So partner up or get in groups of three and talk about that for just a second. Okay, so now that we all know where we struggle just a little bit with motivation. Let's talk a little bit about what motivation is and then we'll move into some tips on how to become more motivated. But before we get started, one of the things that I always like to ask people during a presentation is to be here now. What do you think I mean when I say be here now? Be present, be present right? What else? Put your phone away. That was my nice way of saying that, right? <laughs> what else? Be engaged, right? Like it's so easy to be distracted, but I promise you, you're gonna get so much more out of today if we're all here now. So with that being said, are you here right now? That was not a rhetorical question. <laughs> and that was not very convincing. So we'll try that again. Are you here right now? Yes, okay, good, we can move forward. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this is so important. They say that the common state of mind of employees encompasses this, pressured and overwhelmed. Employees feel not good enough. They have a sense of perfectionism and self-criticism, shame and or use shame responses, they feel anxiety, they panic, they feel frozen, they feel disengaged and disgruntled and exhaustion and burnout. Now, if all of the employees within your organization are feeling all of these things some of the time, what do you think that does to your organization? Destabilizes, which means what? Uh, 
Okay, good, good. What else? How can this be problematic for your organization if your employees are feeling this way? Okay, so not working or moving in an efficient manner. Has anyone ever felt any of these things on this list? Right? We probably all have from time to time. So the, the U.S. Labor Statistics Bureau estimated that on average, the U.S. loses $318 billion per year with disengaged employees. That is billion with a B in lost revenue because employees are disengaged. What does it look like if an employee is disengaged? What are they doing instead? <laughs> like what, like not working, right? But what else are they doing? Absolutely, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So they are doing things like they're on Facebook all day, or they're talking to people about things, and it's good to talk to people about things that are not work-related, just not all day long, right? Um, or they're just sitting there staring at the wall, or they're not showing up to work, right? So if it's $318 billion for the U.S. economy, imagine what it is for state government. What do you think it might be for the transportation cabinet? Now, I don't have those numbers, but we could see where uh, disengagement costs us a lot of money. So we know how lots of employees feel, but here are the basic skill sets required for sustainable, high-performance individuals. Emotional resiliency, psychological flexibility, motivation, develop critical consciousness, they tend to have self-compassion, clear values, and a sense of purpose, and mindfulness and relaxation. Now imagine a world where you came into work every day and every single one of your coworkers were operating this way. Wouldn't you love to come to work every day? Wouldn't that create an amazing um, environment for you to work in? So that's what we're trying to move towards for all of our employees. But here are our goals for today. <clears throat> we're going to define motivation we're going to explore what drains our own motivation. We'll discuss strategies for getting your mojo back and shifting to a new mindset. Is anyone feeling a lack of mojo some days? Right? Maybe it's just me. We'll talk about the five second rule. We'll empower your goals, but most importantly, we'll have a little bit of fun. Now, does that sound like a good time to you all? Okay, that was not good. I know it's after lunch, but I'm going to need a little more enthusiasm. I said we're going to have fun. Does that sound like a good time to you all? Yes. Okay, good. Now we can move forward. So what is motivation? What I want you to do is get back in your groups or your pairs, and I want you to come up with this, your definition for what you think motivation is. Without using the words to motivate, people will try to throw in the root word, and I'm like, that's not what I mean. So how would you define motivation? So get back with your pairs or with your group and write out a quick definition for motivation. And there is a page in your handout that has that on there if you want to write it down. Okay, give me some definitions. What is motivation? What did this group, I'm just gonna start calling on groups. What did this group write? Okay, good, good. Anyone else have something? Okay, so the drive to accomplish a task, good. Anything else? Okay, state, state of mind to be productive. Good. All of those things are kind of encompassing what motivation is. Motivation, it is the internal drive to accomplish a particular goal. It's also the activation of goal-oriented behavior. And in a work environment, motivation is what makes people want to work. So sometimes it's not just getting to work, right? Sometimes that does feel like half the battle. But getting to work, but wanting to do the work that you're doing once you're at work, right? So why do you think that motivation is so important? We know what it is. What, you all tell me why motivation is so important. What happens when you don't have motivation? Okay, you're not productive. What else? 
Okay, more negative versus positive. You just don't care, right? Like literally the days that I don't have motivation, especially on a weekend, I feel like I could sit around all day and watch as many Netflix movies or TV shows as what I, I can and eat ice cream all day long, right? Because for me, like sometimes the motivation is to see how much ice cream I can actually eat. But like really, if we didn't use our motivation, we wouldn't get anything done ever, right? So motivation helps you get started. That's why it's important. It helps you get started. I always say for me, I take hot yoga and I love, I love the idea of working out. Like the theory of it, I love it. The actual doing it is not my favorite thing in the world. So for me, sometimes the hardest thing to do is just to get to that yoga studio and walk in the door. Once I get started, everything's fine. It's the process of getting there, right? So I need lots of motivation to just get started. <clears throat> so notice the difference between working on something you like and working on something you don't like. When you're motivated about something, you can work effortlessly. So what are some things that you can work on effortlessly? It doesn't have to be work related, but what types of things do you think, gosh, I could do this all day long? Planning vacation. Pl planning vacation? So not even just going on the vacation, the planning of the vacation. Okay, that is fun to just kind of dream about things, right? Okay, good, so planning vacation, what else? What types of things do you think? Gosh, I could do this all day. Vacation, I guess. <laughs> so, so now <laughs> planning and the actual vacation, okay. Uh, two women in the previous two classes both said gardening. They said they love to go out in their garden. I'm not a gardener. I have a black thumb. Um, my mom's a great gardener, so she's like, I don't know where I went wrong with you. I killed basil and mint last year. That's pretty impressive to kill some mint, right? So some people it's gardening. Some people it's cooking. Some people it is working out. I have a friend that runs marathons, and I don't understand physically how that happens, but she runs marathons all the time. Um, she says the hardest part is around mile 12 or 13, and I'm thinking the hardest part has to be mile one. Like it has to be because I just don't even understand how you get to mile one, right? So definitely motivation helps you get started. It also helps you to keep moving. So sometimes the problem is not the start. Sometimes the problem is you get into it and something else comes up or something else happens and you start to lose your motivation. So getting started is one thing, but keep moving is another. Whatever you do, there are always obstacles along the way. Um, if you don't have motivation, it's easy to get discouraged when you meet such obstacles. That's why motivation often makes the difference between winners and losers. So sometimes you need that motivation to just keep moving, or as Dory says in um, Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, right? So motivation makes you do more than necessary. So if you are motivated about something, you will voluntarily do more about it than what is required from you. Has anyone ever had that experience where you do more than what's asked of you because you feel so passionately about it? For me, it's with my nephews. I have two nephews that are five and seven, and I don't have kids of my own, so they are my motivation for lots of things, and I love to spoil them and buy them gifts and take them for Aunt Coco dates. So I do more that's necessary because I feel really, really motivated by developing relationships with them. And then motivation makes your work or activity fun. If you feel motivated, you're gonna have a little bit of fun doing it. Okay. Um, so what drains your motivation? We talked about this a little bit, but what do you think on average drains people's motivations? If you had to guess what the number one thing was. Bad a bad boss, okay. That's actually the number one reason why people leave their jobs. They might love the work that they do, but the number one reason people leave is their boss. So that is definitely a factor. What else do you think drains motivation? The unmotivated, other unmotivated people? Okay. Someone said negative people. I call those people energy vampires, right? They just suck all the energy out of you. Okay, what were you gonna say? Uh, 
repetition, okay, so doing the same things over and over again. Maybe that's why I don't like running, because it feels like doing the same thing over and over. Look, I just had an awakening right here on the stage. No, no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else drains motivation? What else do you think might drain motivation? Lack of a challenge. Okay, a lack of a challenge. Good. So research says the number one thing that drains motivation is stress. The stress that we all bring into our lives or that we all have in our lives is the number one thing that drains motivation. So what stresses you out? I made a list of a few things that stress me out. <laughs> Here are just a few of the things that stress me out. Demanding customers, public speaking, traffic, especially not using a turn signal. Technology, coworkers, bosses, illnesses, caregiving, kids, parents, spouses, partners. If you all met my fiance, you would understand that. I love him, but some days he wears me out. Siblings, my body, politics, terrorism, bills, deadlines, too much to do, expectations, change, weather, stupid people, lazy people, rude people, judgmental people, bureaucracy, bad drivers, cell phones, the housing market, the stock market, waiting for trains, health diagnosis, airport security, construction, people who don't put shopping carts back, right? Uh, lack of parking, parking tickets, flat tires, discrimination, change, oppression, weddings. You all were planning a wedding for next March and it has already stressed me out. <laughs> Births, reappointment process, moving, money, natural disasters, taxes and death. Now, these are just a short list of things that wear me out and stress me out from time to time. Now, that doesn't mean that all day, every day, these things are stressing me out, but I would say at least once a week or once a month, one of these things are stressing me out. So what do you think that that might do to my productivity or to my motivation if I'm walking around with all of this stress? It really diminishes it, right? So the key with stress, the first thing that I think is so important is to become aware of what your main stressors are. So on the handout, I want you to write down the top three things that are your stressors right now. Now, you're not going to share it with anyone else, so feel free to be really honest with yourself. Um, what are your top three stressors? I gave you all a whole list, and all you have to come up with is three. So what are your top three stressors right now? Okay, so now that you have what's stressing you out, we can now move to how we can shift to get more motivation. I love this quote from Wayne Dyer. It says, be miserable or motivate yourself. Whatever has to be done, it's always your choice. So really, every single day, every single moment, you have these choices to make. You can be miserable or you can choose to motivate yourself. Both of them are going to take time. Both of them are going to take energy. It's how you choose to spend that time and that energy that's your choice to make. So how can you find motivation? One is focus on yourself. I always say mind your business, right? It's not your job to be worried about what everybody else is doing. It's your job to be focused on what you're doing. Um, I have a friend who is in Bali right now, and she's posting pictures like every 10 minutes, it seems like, of her on a beach in Bali drinking tropical drinks, having a great time, and I'm looking like, but I'm here in Kentucky and it's raining outside, <laughs> right? And so it's really easy, especially in the world of social media with Instagram and Facebook, to be really um, enthralled in what everyone else is doing. But focus on yourself. What could you be doing every day to help you move towards your goals? Next, break up the task into small steps. So from beginning to end, it might feel really overwhelming, but if you break it down into smaller steps, it will help you feel more motivated to keep going. Plus, we as humans love check marks, and we love to cross things off our list. So the smaller the step you break it down into, the more you're going to feel like you've accomplished, and the more motivated you're going to feel to keep moving forward. Um, don't wait for the mood or inspiration. You may never feel like doing it. That's just a simple reality. There are certain things that you will never, ever, ever feel like doing, and yet you have to find the motivation to do it anyway. Um, as Nike says, what does Nike say? Just do, it. just do it, right? 
They don't say, do it when you feel like it, do it when you feel better, do it in five minutes. They say, just do it. They say, take action right now, right? And then you do want to take action. You want to take continuous action every single day. And lastly, handle your stress. So we're going to talk a little bit about stress um, and how stress works and how it can diminish motivation. What happens a lot of times is we have an event, and that event will trigger some type of stress. So it seems pretty simple when it's just one event equals one stress. What happens for most of us is this. We have several events that happen at the same time or around the same time, and that leads to really big stress, right? In the workplace, it looks like this. A work issue, simple enough, equals work stress. In the reality, the experience is this, <laughs> right? We have demanding clients, we have policy changes, we have organizational upset, we have a lack of funding for things, and that equals burnout. Now raise your hand if you've ever experienced the bottom part, right? So what can we do in order to help decrease some of the things that are draining our stress? So this is what it looks like. I, I love this visual representation because it kind of feels overwhelming, and that's what happens to us lots of times when we're feeling stress, including spilt milk, right? <laughs> so now you have a choice. You can live outside in or inside out. But it really starts with the power of your thoughts. Wayne Dyer, who I quoted earlier, set, has a book entitled Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. And I truly do believe that you have the capacity to change your life by changing your thoughts. So when I say the word lemon, what do you instantly think of? Just shout it out. What's the first thing that popped into your mind? Okay, lim limes? Okay, okay, he, I say lemon, he heard limes. Okay, so lemonade, limes, lemon, what else? A bad car. Sour. That's normally the first thing that pops into my mind is sour, right? Now, I love anything with lemon in it. I love lemon bars, I love lemon cake, I love lemons in general. I have sweet tea from McDonald's, I'm like, throw as many lemons as you can in there, right? Like, I love lemons. And so for me, the second I hear the word lemon, my whole mouth kind of starts to salivate because I think about all of the delicious things that I can eat with lemon. So not only is that thought having an emotional reaction, it can have a physical reaction as well, right? Uh, when I hear the words making tea, I think about my morning process because I'm really big into tea. Like, I've started to go down a crazy spiral of like tea that no one needs to know as much information about tea as what I currently know, but I love tea. But every morning I do this process of making a pot of tea and it's how I start my day. So for me, it's like this is how I calm myself, this is how I start my day. What about virtual reality? What's one of the first things that you think of when you hear virtual reality? Those crazy goggle things that are out right now, right? I love that commercial, that's why I included this, that commercial with the old man that puts them on and he's like, whoa, it's really funny to me. So I just laugh because that's the first thing I think about when I think about virtual reality. So our thoughts work as a movie projector. We can have these thoughts and we can play them over and over and over again in our mind on the movie projector that is our brain. So the power of your thoughts is so important. So what does this outside in, inside out thing mean? So if you believe that you're outside in, you have a fixed mindset. And that means we're at the mercy of our circumstances, whatever they may be. The only way to feel better is to whip our circumstances into shape. We feel stuck in our feelings, normally those of shame, and it seems fair to blame, project, or go off on other people. We get overwhelmed, we shut down, we think there's an external cause for our experiences, so it seems like we need an external cure to fix it versus an inside out view of life, with it, which is a growth mindset. And with that, we understand that we are the moment to moment creator of our personal reality. We have more moments of understanding. We are a witness to our internal experience, so we notice our thoughts and are likely to notice when something is off. We are more able more often to settle ourselves first, and we have less need to control, fix, or avoid. We feel less overwhelmed. So, I like to think of thoughts this way, catch and release. Does anyone fish in here? Okay, so what does that mean when you catch and release a fish? 
Okay, you catch it and you throw it back. So you catch it and you're not taking it home and eating it, you're not mounting it. You catch it and you release it. Why is that so important? Why do we catch and release sometimes? To let someone else catch it? Because you're not motivated to clean it, okay. <laughs> to control population, right? So with our thoughts, I think if you catch and release, it's almost like you're noticing your first thought may not be your best thought, right? Has anyone ever had a thought about themselves or a thought about a situation and all of a sudden you're like, is that true? Maybe not, right? So what I often do is that first thought I ask myself, and why? And why do I think this? And then what? Five times. So I may force myself to ask at least five questions about a thought before I believe it to be as true as possible in that moment. So is this the thought you want to go with? If not, you can pick a different thought. You can change your thought. It's that simple. So the next piece is called check yourself before you wreck yourself because I think that this is how we start to move, to shift towards motivation. Um, and it, I always ask myself, what's up with me right now? So when I'm not feeling motivated, I'm like, well, what's going on right now? And these are the four things that I look at when I'm trying to figure out why I'm not feeling motivated. <clears throat> the first is physical state. How do you think your physical state can impact the type of motivation that you have or the level of motivation that you might have? Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes if you're sick or if you're in pain, or if you're hurt, you don't feel like doing anything, right? I had surgery four weeks ago, and the first three days after that surgery, like one of my friends was like, I bet you're having a great time, like watching TV, and reading books. I was like, are you kidding me? Like I had no motivation to do anything but just sit, because your physical state can really impact how you feel in terms of doing anything moving forward. What about your mood? How do you think your mood can impact your motivation? Okay, positive mood makes you more motivated, negative mood makes you less motivated. Good, we're gonna go into that a little bit more. What about your state of mind? And there's a difference between mood and state of mind. How do you think that might impact? Mm -hmm. I call that blender brain, right? Where it's just like, there's so much stuff going on that it feels like everything's just kind of whirling together, right? Sometimes I have molasses brain too, which is like everything's moving very slowly and I cannot figure out what's going on. And then lastly is your personal rule book. And these are the rules or the thoughts that you have been taught from your family or from your community. And some of these thoughts may not be serving you to the best of your ability. So on the sheet, I wrote, I wrote it out for you all. That way you can kind of think about this whenever you're not feeling motivated. When it comes to your physical health, What's happening for you physically right now? Um, are you well fed? How do you feel when you're eating something that you know is good for you versus something that you know is not good for you? Now in the moment you might feel really good, right? Like I had a piece of high last night, it made me feel really good in the moment. But I know long term it may not be that great for me. Are you well rested? How do you operate when you're sleeping well versus when you're not sleeping well? When it comes to mood, how does your mood impact your thoughts, feelings, reactions, and behavior? How do you know when you're in a low mood? What does that look like for you if you're in a low mood? Quiet, Quiet. okay. <laughs> like a zombie, like it, the world is just happening around you, right? Now here's what's interesting. I don't wake up every morning in a high mood that's like, yes, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to do training, then change the world, right? That is not me every morning. That's not me before I give a presentation every time either. So knowing that you can shift from a low mood to a higher mood is really important, but you have to know what shifts you, right? For me, it's music. I have a dedicated Spotify playlist that's called Colleen Get Hype, and that's what I use in order to shift my mood, right? And so I know that these certain songs are going to get me in the right frame of mind. Um, one thing I want to talk about quickly is happiness is not a destination. And oftentimes we feel like, oh, I'll be happy when I lose 10 pounds or when I run this marathon or when I get this promotion. And what we see over and over again is that they might make that achievement and yet they're still not happy. So don't think of happiness as a place that you arrive at. 
Think of it as things that you're experiencing from day to day, moment to moment. So we have negative emotions that are on the downward spiral and upward emotions that are on the upward spiral. You want to make sure that if you're trying to motivate yourself that you shift from some of these things on the downward spiral to the upward spiral. Okay, so here's some things that we need to remember about moods. They impact the quality of our thinking. They impact our problem solving. They seem real when, when in one mood we forget the other moods exist. Has anyone ever had that experience where it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy, I can't imagine ever feeling sad again. Or, oh my gosh, I'm so sad, I can't imagine ever feeling happy again. So we kind of forget that other moods exist while we're in a certain mood. We can get lost in them. I call that the Wikipedia effect. Um, one day, my, I called my fiance and I said, well, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm reading about the history of beards. I have no idea how I got here. He had been on Wikipedia for two hours, just clicking links. And all of a sudden, he was reading about the history of beards. So that happens sometimes with our thoughts. They can spiral into different ways. And they are temporary. And we should not take one low mood thought seriously. Um, so the, your state of mind. Again, I talked about this a little bit earlier. Are you at your best right now? Like, is your mind the blender brain? Is it the molasses? The one I call loading, 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 because has anyone had that experience with Netflix where it's like loading, 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 and you're just like waiting for something to happen? So are you at your best right now? If not, how can you shift that? And then the rule book, I love this. I pledge allegiance to my rule book and to the, conclusion, the conclusions upon which it was drafted. I will defend and protect my rule book until death do us part. Now again, we all have these rules that we've been taught and that have been told to us, but are they always serving our best interests? Probably not. So sometimes you have to break up with your rule books. Are you always shooting all over yourself, right? Oh, I should do this because that's what's expected of me. Or as a woman, I should do this. Or as someone my age, I should do this, right? All of these rules sometimes don't work out in our best way. So, what are you supposed to do when you catch on fire? Okay, pretty simple, right? <laughs> like, they teach us that in kindergarten, that if you ever catch on fire, the rule is to stop, drop, and roll. I love that they teach that in kindergarten because it's like, I don't know about you all, but I'm imagining none of us in here have ever actually caught on fire where we've had to stop, drop, and roll. Yet, we remember that clear as day, right? So, stop, drop, and roll. But what if we switch it up a little bit to stop, drop, reflect and roll. What do you think the benefit of reflecting before you roll might be? Okay, mindfulness of your actions. Now I'm not saying like 20 minute reflection while you're on fire, right? <laughs> but what benefit could happen if you take just a second to reflect? Okay, you could learn why you caught on fire. You could avoid rolling into something like gasoline or something more flammable, right? So taking just a second to reflect oftentimes can help change the outcome. So when you're lacking motivation, I like to use the stop, drop, reflect, and roll idea. So stop and notice your internally created experience. So what are your thoughts right now? Drop, shift your awareness away from your current thoughts and connect with your innate wisdom, creativity, wellness, and true self. Reflect what's the most meaningful and important thing to do right now, and roll forward. So then you can move forward with guided action, right? So stop, drop, reflect, and roll. So if all of this fails, I like to use this idea called the five-second rule. And I did not come up with this idea. A woman named Mel Robbins did. And it basically says that if you take action within five seconds, before you talk yourself out of doing something, right? So oftentimes it's like the alarm goes off and it's like, oh, I'm gonna hit snooze, I don't really feel like getting out of bed. But if you count down five, four, three, two, one, and then make yourself get out of bed, you take an action, you activate an action, you're gonna be more successful. So what areas do you think that you could apply a five second rule? Not like I dropped a piece of cookie on the ground and now I'm gonna pick it up and eat it. Beyond that, what areas do you think the five-second rule could be a benefit? Chores. Chores, right, like I hate doing laundry. Well, actually, let's rephrase that. I hate all chores. So, oftentimes I have to talk myself into doing things with the five-second rule, right? What else? Responding to a disgruntled employee, a worker. OK, 
Okay, responding to someone, good. Here are things that I think people could use it for. If you want to, I've been at conferences or at meetings where I think, gosh, I really want to talk to that person, but oh, I don't know if they're going to have time or maybe they're too busy or like they're up here, they have this position and I just have this position. Just five, four, three, two, one. Hello, my name's Colleen. It's nice to meet you, right? That could change the outcome of lots of things. Um, walk somewhere, like walk up to someone, walk somewhere, write something, schedule something, send something. Um, I have stacks of unsent Christmas cards from last year that I have addressed and forgot to put stamps on because I kept thinking, oh, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later, right? It would have been a perfect time to say, five, four, three, two, one, let me put a stamp on these. And then ask, ask for the things that you need and the things that you want. So empower your goals and your dreams. Come up with a list of non-negotiables. I put that on your form for you to think about. Here are some non-negotiables for me. I make monthly to-do lists. I write at least one article every month that I get published. I tackle today with my top three. So what are the top three things that I need to accomplish today? Um, does anyone have a very long to-do list that feels overwhelming sometimes? I usually try to say, what are the top three things that I need to get done today, and what's my big one motivation for today? I batch process emails. So if I spent all day responding to emails as they came in, I would never really get anything done. So I set times to respond to emails. This one's a big one. If it takes five minutes, do it. If it takes five minutes or less, just go on and do it. Because how many times do you have all of these five minute or less things that you think, oh, I'll get to that later, I'll get to that later, I'll get to that later, and then they add up really quickly. So if it takes five minutes or less, just go on and do it. <clears throat> I work 30 minutes from home in the morning before I even get to work, and I make my guy my number one priority because I just think that's really important. And for me, and our journey, I think that's just been a really important thing to shift that. So some scientifically proven things that help motivate a morning ritual. So what are you doing in the mornings? Are you just getting up and like going with the flow? Develop a morning ritual. As I said, I make tea in the morning. That's one of the things that's part of my morning ritual. Do the important work first. So there's a book called Eat That Frog that talks a lot about this. If you don't do the important work first, you're doing all of these things that don't really amount to anything and you're wasting all of your energy doing those instead of the important work first. Regroup when you slow down. Um, move meetings and calls to the afternoon. It's scientifically proven that that's when you're at your best. Stop working. I know that sounds counterintuitive to talk on motivation, but there are times that you just have to stop and then regroup the next day. And then remove distractions. So I love candy and I love to eat, specifically love M&Ms. And I used to have this uh, candy dish on my desk that had M&Ms in it that I thought, oh, well, I'll have these here for when guests come to my office, right? And they can help themselves with some M&Ms. Now, who do you think was actually eating those M&Ms? Me, all day, all day long. I was just like snacking on these M&Ms, right? So I had to finally just remove the candy dish and remove the M&Ms because they really weren't serving me well and they became a big distra distraction. So what are your top distractions? Here are some distractions that they say scientifically happens. Morning meetings, alerts. How many alerts do you have going off on your phone throughout the day, right? Facebook alerts, email alerts, text. Having no plan at all is a big distraction. Interruptions, email. All of those things are big distractions in helping, um, helping you move away from your motivation. So I want you to take one second and write one sentence on the page that says, moving forward, I will what? So based off of what you learned about motivation, what is one thing that you want to do moving forward? Okay, so does anyone have any questions about motivation? Anything that we didn't talk about that you're like, I really wish you would have mentioned this. Okay, let me give you the names of a couple of books if you want some additional information. Um, people always ask, well, what books have you read or what books are good for motivation? 
Uh, the five second rule that I mentioned is by a woman named Mel Robbins. Essentialism by Greg McKinnon, McCowan. Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And Rising Strong by Re Brene Brown. So those are just a few books that if you're looking for more information on motivation or something to help you feel more motivated, these are great books to start with. Um, I'd love to hear from you. If you ever have any questions or if you'd like a copy of the presentation or more information, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. But I want to leave you with this. When I was growing up, the most important thing that my mom ever said to me was, Colleen, you have an opportunity to change the world or change a world and both are equally as important. So imagine what you could do if you change a world every day. And all of us have those opportunities to change a world every single day, especially every single day that we come to work. Sometimes all we need is a little bit of motivation, a little five, four, three, two, one, and move ourselves to talk to the person that we need to talk to or to say the things that we need to say it's not as hard as what it seems. It's a little bit easier. Once you get going, you're going to feel more motivated to keep going. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to change a world, I hope. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thank you all so much, and have a great afternoon.